Affinity 2.4 has just been released, and in this video, I'll show you all of the biggest changes. The first change is a new keyboard shortcut. To see how it works, I'll make this photo a child layer to the circle. Then, if I move the circle, you can see that the photo moves with it. But now, in version 2.4, we can hold the spacebar key while clicking and dragging, and the child layer will stay in place. The next update allows us to make things the same size. As an example, let's say I like the size of this circle and want all of the other circles to be the exact same size. To do this, I first need to select the circle with the size that I like. Then I can hold down Shift and select the other circles. Then if I come up to the Alignment panel, I can give them all the same width and height. But there's one more thing you need to know about this feature. In this example, let's say I want all of the photos to have the same width as this one. Just as before, I'll select the photo that I like, and then hold down Shift to select the others. Then I'll come back to the Alignment panel. But this time, if I give all of them the same width, it doesn't look quite right. So in a case like this, remember to turn on Maintain Aspect Ratio. The next update is to Layer States, which already existed in Affinity Photo, but have now been added to Affinity Designer and Publisher. To access Layer States, come up to Window, and then down to States. With this new panel, we can create presets for which of our layers are turned on or off. For example, I can't decide if this document should be about elephants or ducks, so I want to compare both versions of the design. To do this, I'll first turn off all the duck layers. Then I can save a layer state with just the elephant layers turned on. Then I'll turn the elephant layers off and turn the duck layers on. Then I can save this as a layer state. Now I can quickly jump between the two layer states to see which version of the design I like better. Next, let's learn about an improvement to the selection box. Whenever you have a layer selected, you can easily rotate it. But after rotating the layer, your selection box is rotated as well. To fix this, you can press the period key on your keyboard. That seems good, but if you ever click off of the object and then select it again, then the selection box is rotated again. Luckily, version 2.4 fixes this. Just press the period key to change your selection box, and then press control period on a PC or command period on a Mac. That locks the new selection box, so even if you click off of the object and select it again, the selection box stays exactly how we left it. For the next update, we can choose a key object when spacing things. To space things in Affinity, just click and drag to select the layers, and then open the Alignment panel. From here, we can evenly space the layers, then press Apply. This is what we've had in Affinity, where the furthest left and right layers are kept in the same location, while the other layers are evenly distributed between those two. But now in 2.4, we can choose a key object. To see this, I'll select the second row of circles. Then I'll hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and click on the layer you want to be the key object. A key object will stay in place along with the object on the far left. So now when I use the alignment panel, those two layers will stay in the same location while all the other layers are moved in order to create even spacing. Okay, now I want to quickly show you all of the other small changes in version 2.4. If you have a vector object selected with the Move tool, 
You can double click on it to switch to the node tool. But now in version 2.4, you can also double click with the node tool to switch to the move tool. Version 2.4 also adds support for additional raw files. So now you can edit raw photos from any of these devices. And in Affinity Designer, you can now export your work as a DWG and as a DXF. Also, all of the Affinity programs can now import and export 32-bit HDR PNG files. 2.4 also allows you to lock your insertion point. Just hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and then click on an insertion point. That insertion point will then be locked until you click on it again. So in this example, each layer I add will be placed underneath the layer that I previously had selected. And finally, there's a small update to the export persona. Now, if you open one of your slices and then open the slices properties, you can now choose document name from the list of variables. And that's it. Those are all of the changes in version 2.4. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the update.